everyone for coming and um, I'd first of all I'd like to thank Carl and Alan for um, and getting me to come here and especially Carl who I knew in Japan who um, through his encouragement got me to come to uh, um, the US and New York and um, also Mariana and Leon who run the gallery and my wife Kirsten of course <laughs> who's uh, her encouragement as well. So this is my fourth exhibition here at NoHo Gallery. I did one uh, in 2012, and 2015, 2018, and then a bit of a gap, of course, because of world events, um, and the show now. The artwork in this exhibition reflects where I'm from, from Victoria in Australia, um, from the mountains to the sea, at all various places of interest in the state of Victoria. In Australia, we have states like the US, they're quite large. Uh, Victoria's the second smallest, Tasmania is a, the smallest one, um, a representative from Tasmania is here, yes. <laughs> and um, it's in the southern part of Australia. Uh, in the exhibition is depicted uh, eucalyptus trees, which is the native trees of Australia. And there's many different types of eucalyptus trees in, uh, in the country. And I did some research there and there's a, over a hundred different varieties of eucalyptus trees just in the state of Victoria. The paintings represent distance and atmosphere and uh, various elements in a landscape. So you've got here a few different types of eucalyptus trees, for example, and this is the wattle tree, which is a small, beautiful little yellow um, flowering tree, which is a symbol of Australia. During COVID, I had a, quite a bit of free time, and I managed to get a hold of an academic thesis written by a great art historian called John Ruskin and he wrote a thesis on landscape painting called Modern Painters and I had the time, to, I acquired the five volumes of it and um, read through them during COVID and it was a, a great revelation and he was an amazing um, art historian and a friend of the great Turner who was a famous English landscape painter. So. From some of the ideas of John Ruskin, I've derived this new work. And the title there in the exhibition that I've got there, it, where it says, the artist has gone to nature, is a quote from John Ruskin, where he felt that you could find, see infinity in a painting if you could see that the artist has actually been on the spot. And it's very interesting that Monet said that 90% of Impressionism actually came from the ideas of John Ruskin, which I was quite surprised about. Yeah, but, um, and also another influence on my art is my, I lived in Japan in the 1990s, and that's where I met Carl, and I met American people for the first time. We don't usually meet Americans way down, everyone sort of says, I must go down under, but none of you ever seem to go where I live anyway. I never meet Americans in Melbourne or Victoria. Uh, so up in Japan, uh, there was a lot of Americans there, and there still is, who teach English. And some of them are very um, clever, and they become translators and people like that. Um, so made, made a lot of friends and, and met, met a lot of people, as well as the Japanese people. And was quite um, influenced by um, Japanese culture and their ideas of the spirit and essence of 
um, the spirit in rocks and trees in their beautiful, amazing Zen gardens that they have there, which was completely blown away with the spirituality of, of uh, their uh, Shinto and Buddhist sort of um, spiritual um, zest and uh, I'm trying to find the words, a, a philosophy that's related to nature which is different from Western conception. But we have also some sort of spiritual feeling about nature. But I certainly was uh, very impressed with the Japanese and their thing. So that was another thing. And um, the paintings are also influenced by many years ago, about 20 years ago, I was a copyist in national galleries for quite a, a, a time in London at the National Gallery and the Tate and also the National Gallery in Washington. I copied some great practitioners of landscape painting, romantic landscape artists, um, uh, Corro and Claude Lorraine and people in the know sort of know about these type of artists and I derived a style and technique because I went to art school in the 80s where we were sort of shown a thing called neo-expressionism but not a lot of technique how to create a three-dimensional space on canvas. But um, so it's a long genesis, the work that I do. Um, and I don't want to continue much longer, but if it, that's about sums it up. Uh, any questions or anything like that? <laughs> I've done a bit of high school teaching, so that's what I'm sort of used to talking. Yeah. Jeff. Yeah. I can't believe there was 2018 when I saw you because I bought two paintings from you. You did, yeah, thank you. And they were much more modest. I mean, they were landscapes, obviously. Yes. But just having gotten here like 15 minutes or 20 minutes ago, yeah. I'm very impressed with your expanded canvases. Oh, thank you very much, yes, yes. And what is really, I spent four years in graduate school in art criticism. <laughs> But what I really, where you really deserve homage is you have large scale canvases with meticulous detail and that's not easy. No, and it's all been done on the spot. And oh. I can guarantee that every, everything that I've done, I've done out in the field. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And um, I've got the bites from ants and spiders and all the rest of it to prove it. Yeah, that's right. This, this is a notch up from where you were the last time. Certainly, yeah, certainly. The, the canvases I brought were like yeah. 12, 14. Yeah, right yes, that's right. Which so is what I, mostly what I buy because I live under a park. Yes. I'm not going to buy it. So yeah, yeah. So my, the challenge was to, to move from the small works with 15 centimeters by 30 into a larger scale yep. but still have that freshness and spontaneity that I had in the small ones on a larger scale. But I want to compliment you, I mean I just, before you start, I just walked in 15 minutes ago but I was just struck to do detail like this by this is one thing, to do detail like yeah. this. Is, yes. Well, well, for all of you that are, may not be aware of painting, it is work. Yeah, and you've got yeah. to plan it, you've got to organize it, you just don't sit down and certainly, start doing yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, it's like, yeah, well, Russ can help me, yeah, 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 reading uh, modern painters, I think, well, is, 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 one, know, of really really yeah, yeah. Just, is one of the things that really helped me, yeah, yeah. I'm flabbergasted. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 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 Well, it, it's, it's something that moves me in a place that I, I like to drive. I'm a driver and I drive big distances and I see something that I think is quite amazing. But in particular, these paintings here, there was a, I, I, in Australian art history, there was an, a guy called Eugene von Gerard, who was a German artist who worked in the 19th century. And he explored an area called the Yabba Road, which was up in the high country in the northeast of Australia. And a, a guy who was doing a PhD in, on that topic alerted me to this Yabba Road, where a lot of um, von Gerard's great paintings were painted. And so I 
Well, we've got modern roads now, so I investigated and drove up into this area and I've spent time up there and, and found some of the amazing landscapes that, that... So it's derived from a romantic vision that originally Von Gerard... And he was very similar to the Hudson River School guys that you... Uh, Cole and Church and all those characters that the American art history um, reveres. Yeah. In a, in a simple yeah. nutshell. Yeah, yeah, that's why. All right, okay. That's enough. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.